Hello, 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 ladies. Welcome to another episode of Closing Deals and Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And today we are going to spill the tea on the industry because recently I had somebody ask me to do a reel about being hit on in sales. And this came from our marketing team because us ladies are actually researching on YouTube what to do when you're getting hit on sales and how do you still close the deal. And um, I felt like there's so much to be said on that versus just like a little, you know, 30 second reel. And I'm here to be vulnerable with you, to spill the tea with you, because I'm telling you that unfortunately, so many times in the sales industry, we are hit on and then we have no idea what to do because I don't know if you've ever experienced this being hit on in sales, but you're also in a weird position because you're like, I need to be nice. I'm trying to smile. I'm trying not to lose the deal. So what do I do here? Because now I feel like I'm out of alignment with who I am um, in order to close a deal, but I'm also trying to be a mom and take care of my family. And so do I just let it happen or like, what do I do from here? You know, this really started for me when I was a waitress. I was a waitress for almost 10 years. And I remember being in fine dining, like you were like a suit and like tie kind of situation. And I had a uh, few regulars that would come in and spend like thousands of dollars every time they came in. And they would tip me thousands of dollars when they would come in, which was a really cool experience. Like they would spend 10 grand and tip me five. And it was the first time I ever received like large amounts of money like that. I grew up not having much. And um, I always wanted to make sure like I overly performed um, to make sure that I can get these like really awesome tips. And uh, I remember being sometimes able to be in my cocktail outfit, which was like a black dress and a black skirt. And whenever this regular would come in, I would want to be in the black dress and the black skirt so I can ensure that I got a bigger tip. I think that was the first time that I saw that for myself. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting that, you know, my young 19, 20 year old, 21 year old brain is like, hey, like I need to sexualize myself in order to make sure that I get uh, more money here. And I think that this continued to progress. I had uh, many times, you know, in sales positions where I remember being in B2B space and I was really trying to make sure that I landed these clients. And so these clients would ask me to go to lunch with them, right? And this one time, this guy's asking me to go to lunch with him and I show up with one of um, our, you know, male associates and he was so offended that I showed up with a male associate because he thought we were going on a date. At the same time, I'm trying to land a multi-million dollar deal. <laughs> So how do you navigate that? How do you navigate being consistently seen as possibly an object while you're trying to make sure that you take care of your family and provide money for them while also trying to honor your values and your, you know, belief systems and who you are and try not to have somebody cross the line. So we're going to talk about that today because I feel like a lot of my girlfriends have had some of these experiences as well. And I just I want to make sure that I'm sharing my tea with you and please drop in the comments, you know, situations that happen to you too. I'm sure that we could all learn and benefit from that. Go ahead and make sure that you like this, share it to a girlfriend that needs it um, and go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you're really wanting to get the tea every single week, make sure you hit that little notification button. I'm sure to uh, honor you and support you any way that I, any way that I can. So let's go into this. I want to tell you a story of my friend. I'm just going to give her a random name. Her name is going to be Sally. Okay. Now, this is the first time that I've heard about being able to change this process. Okay. So she's working on this deal. It's a six figure deal and it's in the B2B space. And what she does is she's talking to this guy. They're at like a dinner with like multiple people and everyone else kind of leaves and they have a contract out and they're kind of going through it. And he goes ahead and he puts his hand on the lower part of her back and then on her shoulder, kind of like rubbing it back and forth a little bit. As like, I'm really excited for us to be doing um, this deal together. And she then proceeded to take his hand with her hand off of her shoulder and put it down and looked him there in the eyes and was like, sir, if this is how we're going to do business, then I don't want to do business with you. Ooh. What? 
boldness this woman had. I don't know if I would have been able to do the same in that moment in that time with the tools that I had. But what it did is that he like hyped up and was like, oh, I wasn't meaning to offend you. And yeah, like, let's do this deal. Like, this is business. And they signed the deal and they went along the way. And what I thought about with that is, ladies, like, sometimes like men don't know what they don't know. And as ladies, when we're not trained correctly, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Our facial expressions say a lot. And when you interact with another woman, the main priority for you with the her is to make her feel warm, welcome, seen. Normally, when you approach another woman, you face her straight on. You never turn to the side because you need to make sure that she biologically feels like she can trust you, which open hands, open posture towards her. With men, you turn to the side. We're biologically wired for each other. So if you are facing a man straight on, it almost is like, hey, I'm available for you um, subconsciously. So just realize that if you ever do any type of events where you're in person or you're meeting somebody for a business meeting, make sure you're talking to men, turning at a 45 degree angle with women straight on. What you also don't realize is that your facial expressions say a lot. Whenever you like a man and you're interested in him sexually, you might smile a little bit more, use really great eye contact, and maybe look down, look up, laugh a little bit, right? That's what you get to do. It's like, hey, I'm interested. Hey, hey. In a sales conversation, most of you guys are taught to what? Use great eye contact, smile, maybe sometimes use humor. You see what the problem could possibly be here. If I'm using great eye contact with you and I'm smiling and we're having a great time, don't you think that maybe, potentially, possibly, the guy that you're selling to could possibly think that you might be interested into him? And ladies, normally when we want to get something that we want, think about when you're a little girl and you're asking your parents for something, please, oh my God, you know, dad, love you, please do this for me. Or when you're wanting something from a teacher or an authority figure, you go into like, oh, please, right? We've all done that. And I think that some of us have different stories than other people, but I'm just giving a generalized statement. Please, right? And so sometimes when we want something from somebody else, right, sometimes we can go back into little girl bad tendencies of the, please, yes, I want this. And you're like bending, right, to somebody. Again, problem, 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 problem. Because you might have the experience of having people continuously hit on you. Maybe they think that you're really interested in them and you're not. Your intention is definitely not to show that you're flirting. Um, if you were having the experience, you're like, oh my gosh, all my leads, they want to date me or they keep hitting on me or they keep messaging me on Instagram. So weird. I promise you that the common denominator in there might be you. Uh, and I know that might be a little hard to hear, but I'm going to help you out. So like, stay tuned with me because I'm going to give you some tools to help you. And yes, there is exceptions to every rule. There are some weird creeper people out there. Trust me, I know. People message me on Instagram all the time saying really weird stuff. And no, you cannot buy my socks. <sighs> but I'm just letting you know that if it's happening over and over again, if there is a pattern, if there's a pattern, you have to pay attention to it. If something's coming up over and over again, take a look. What is that? Is there something that you're doing that's triggering that or inviting that? We have to take a look and see. And no, I don't think it's like dressing too sexy. I think a woman, you are allowed to dress sexy and be unapologetic about who you be. Own it. You get to be hot. You get to wear tight clothes. Like, I don't think that's it. Like, because I know some of you guys are possibly thinking, well, maybe, you know, I'm not wearing the right thing. Like, no, you can dress up sexy and you can be taken seriously. I promise you. Here's the secret that I learned that literally changed the game for me. Oh, changed everything for me. And um, I think it's really, really important that you understand this as well because the way men are wired, right? When they see a girl that's smiley and you're like open and oh my gosh, I would love to help you and you're being inviting, like you look like you're flirting with them. 
It doesn't matter what you're talking about. You could be talking about business. Oh my God, I love real estate and I love going into homes and showing them. And I, I get so excited about you know, really helping people find their dream home. Well, you look like you are on cloud nine and, and you're bubbly and you're, ah, and you're, and they think that you are very interested in them. And then they're super confused as to why you get upset that they asked you out. Versus when we talk to women, you can talk like that. And it's absolutely okay. So here's what you get to do with men. I'm going to give you an example of like what to do at the beginning in order for them to stop uh, thinking that you're readily available for them. And then number two, we're going to give some examples of what to do if like you're in it and they start hitting on you, how to shut that shit down so fast and still make sure that you close the deal, baby girl, because you're so worth making the money without having to compromise anything. Promise you that. So men get to earn your smile. I said it. Men get to earn your smile. And what do I mean by that? If I'm in negotiations, if I'm in a business event, if I'm in a networking event, if I'm on a Zoom call with a man, I need to act a little bit differently than if I was in conversation with a woman. And why? Because I don't want to give signals from my body language that I want them in a way that is not what I want for them. So men get to earn my smile in business. I get to be short, knowledgeable, to the point. I get to be curious and inquisitive about what's going on in their world so that I can problem find correctly and see if I can come up with a solution. But I'm not going to be there and go, oh, oh my God, la, 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 la. No. I'm going to make sure that I am direct to the point. I mean, stern with my voice. Sometimes I feel like you almost have to switch into a masculine energy when you're doing this versus a feminine, soft, surrendering, loving energy because I want you to be able to close the deal, okay? At the end of the day, when it comes to a guy and you're trying to sell to them, I promise you that it's going to be more valuable for them if you can really solve the real problem that they actually have, the one that's disturbing things in their world, the one that's been going on for a long time that they don't realize how bad it's getting, the one that's going to cost them super incredible consequences if they don't change it. That's more valuable to them than them going on a date with you, somebody that they just met, right? It's going to be more valuable. I promise you. Unless you're like the dream girl that they've never had and they've been praying for you and then you're there and like, hey, baby girl, like maybe you should sort of do that. I don't know. If that... <laughs> maybe you found your man. I don't know. But when it comes to a sales conversation, I want to make sure that you are super stern, direct to the point because it's going to be more valuable for them and less risky if they make sure that they are getting the the answer, the solution from you rather than risking it to try to take you out and not being able to work with you. And we have to differentiate that. We have to differentiate that at the very, very beginning. Otherwise, you're going to continuously be like me going on all these lunch dates, thinking that they're lunch meetings and the person not signing the deal and then going with someone else. And then I'm confused. What the hell happened? Or you could be like my friend Sally and shut that shit down really fast and be able to still close the deal, which is what I want you to be able to do. So let's give a few examples of what to do in a conversation. And again, if you've been through something, please drop it below. We can do another episode on that specifically. But let's go through a conversation that um, I had with real, real life examples, my examples of men making me feel uncomfortable and like what I did to shut it down so the first one was in the dms have you guys ever had the experience of having some weird dudes in your dms people that you're trying to sell to and all of a sudden they're sending you some weird stuff oh i got that all the time it was so frustrating oh my gosh you want to get on a call i'm like about what like oh my gosh, Kayla, like, I want to get on a call with you. I want this and this and this. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're this, you're this, you're this. Oh my God, like, what did I do? So there's two different examples of this. The first one is I had a guy 
send me i'm asking him about his business and about like what he's trying to go for and his goals right and all of a sudden he starts sending me this long paragraph of what he would do to me and made me feel so uncomfortable was telling me about like how in awe he was of me and just explicitly sending me sexual content about what he would do with me like what the fuck bro You know, one woman out of three women have experienced some type of um, abuse. And too many women go through sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. And um, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick. You never know what somebody's going through. So as I say these things, you know, I just wanted to honor the woman that's listening to this right now. You are so strong. You know, whatever you've been through, I see you. I honor you. You're worthy of having the life you deserve. You're worthy of being healed. You're worthy of feeling powerful. And I'm sorry for whatever you've been through. Just know that this message is for you, that you're so worthy. And there's something so much bigger for you. There's something so great on the inside of you. And you're so worthy of stepping into that version. And I'm just sending you peace and love right now because you deserve it so this guy sends me all the stuff of what he's gonna do with me and at the time I had you know people on my team they're like hey this is what we should send him back (laughs) so this is what we did we said oh my gosh you're so funny you remind me of my little brother he always does crazy stuff like this first of all completely disarmed him secondly compared him to my little brother right (laughs) thirdly like look if you want me to help you scale to $100,000 a month, then let's have a conversation. If you're not willing to treat this like a professional conversation, then I think that we're done here. But I'm just confused. I'm confused. I thought you wanted to scale your company. Entered end result. He sent back a long paragraph apologizing. And that's what I want to go back to that men don't know what they don't know. I think that sometimes like men don't have the ability to be trained as to what's right and wrong. They've had bad situations, bad circumstances, and somehow, some way, they think it's okay to talk to people in a way that is super derogatory and they need to be, like, freaking checked. <laughs> My God. Like, grow up. Um, but I think that powerfully, as women, we can check men um, in a way that honors us and honors them. Like, hey, I'm not going to tolerate this. It's not okay. You don't talk to me like that without being emotional and I think that that is the main thing because ah, us as women we're emotional creatures right and we want to tell everyone our emotions and say what's coming up for us and here's the problem with that whenever I come to a man really emotional he automatically backs up he's like oh god this looks like it's going to be a lot of drama I don't want to deal with this like what am I going to do and that's a problem because then he's not going to listen to you if I came at that guy and I was like how dare you talk to me like that oh my God, who raised you? Um, Don't ever talk to me like that. Block, 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 right? You normally go into fight or flight mode whenever you're triggered. So if that conversation triggered me, I would go into fight mode of how dare you or go flight mode and I just block them, right? (laughs) Have you ever blocked somebody or try to defend your honor? Both of them don't work. Blocking them doesn't teach them a lesson. And then, you know, fighting doesn't really do anything because now you're emotional and now they're fighting against you yada yada but shutting it down with saying like first to disarming the situation like oh my god like you're so funny you're me and my little brother he's like crude like this and just and my brothers are definitely not just throw that in there my brothers are both really really amazing men but just saying this you remind me of that they do crude stuff like this all the time ha 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 um look you either want to scale your business or not. So we're going to either have a serious conversation or not. Like, what is it going to be? And then he apologized. Here's another situation that was happening. I had another guy messaging me and DMs, right? And a problem with his business. We were talking about it, found everything. We booked a call with him or he booked a call with my team. Every single day, liking my story, commenting to my story. Hola, hermosa. Oh my God. Wow. It's super bonita. You're so pretty. You're so amazing. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And oh my God, why see his name on my calendar and emotionally my heart dropped. I'm like, that's the guy that comments on my story every day. He's on my calendar. What am I going to do? 
And so I send him a voice message before I get on the meeting with them. And I'm like, hey, Bob, because we're just going to use Bob for an example name. I said, hey, Bob, I noticed that you booked a call on my calendar. And uh, I just want to communicate something with you. If this call is to get on to talk to me in any way that's not about business, we're going to end the call immediately. My experience of you right now is that you're making me feel extremely uncomfortable. And I just wanted to be in my integrity and voice that so we can be on the same page for what this call is about. Notice that I didn't say, you make me feel like this. I said, my experience of you right now is that I'm really uncomfortable. You're making me feel really uncomfortable. That's my experience. I didn't say, you are doing this. You are doing that. Pointing the finger, blaming. My experience of you. And he sent me a voice message profusely apologizing. was like, we don't have to do this call if you don't want to. We still got on the call. But I feel like it's those random acts of boldness that are going to separate you from being able to get out of a uncomfortable conversation. And the thing is, is that you have to make a decision that you don't care about the sale. Decide right now that when you act in your integrity and when you are having the right skills, but doing things in your integrity, you're always going to be taken care of. I always feel like God provides for me, even in situations where I felt like sometimes like I couldn't even feed my daughter at night or like I would go to the grocery store and my car would get declined or circumstances that I felt like were really out of my hands. God has always like, shown me a better day. I've survived every single bad day I've ever been through, just like you have. When you're in your integrity, you have to just really trust the process and be like, hey, I don't have to like compromise me in order for me to get this deal. But that's going to be a choice of you getting uncomfortable because there's definitely been times in my life where I would have just like smiled through it. Oh, like, you know, he's touching my arm a little bit too much. Oh, but I really need him to close this deal. So I'm just going to smile and wave. I had something that happened like a year ago. A year ago, I was at an event and um, this guy, you know, was talking to me, was talking to some other people. I was selling in the back of the room and we're all going to dinner. I'm going to one party. Somebody's going to somewhere else. And like the dude, the whole time, one of my personal phone numbers, I gave it to him. He's messaging me. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Was it the truth? No. But I was there to close deals. So I wanted to make sure that we closed deals. Saw him, gave him a hug. And like he ended up signing the deal, which is great. But the whole time afterwards, he was trying to get me to come date him. And I'm like, there has to be a better way to do this. Like there has to be. And I think that it's going to be us women coming together to have an uprising of what we are allowing in our life, which is going to come to what we feel worthy of. Because I think it always is a reflection back of yourself. When you compromise what you're okay with, you start trusting yourself a little bit less. And that sucks. Because when you don't trust yourself, you doubt yourself. And then you don't believe in yourself. And then you start procrastinating. And then you stop performing. And then you go inwards. And then you're not there for other people. And it's like a downward spiral. A downward spiral to where you're having a complete and utter breakdown. And I don't want you to have that. I really don't. There's been many times in my life where I compromised my values and I compromised the woman that I am in order to make sure that I provided for my myself and provided for my daughter. And I didn't have to do it, but I only had the tools that I had at the time that I had. And I think that, you know, if you're in a situation and inside you feel uncomfortable, you need to listen to it. As a woman, you have this really beautiful thing called intuition. And your intuition guides you. And you can only hear it in the silence. In the silence, you can feel the nudges. And if you're in a sales conversation or you're at an event or you're with somebody and inside you feel uncomfortable, you feel it like yucky inside, you feel like you want to puke, feels gross, you need to listen to that. First of all, you get to honor how you feel. Your feelings are so valid. Like, okay, I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. What's coming up for me? Secondly, ask a question. What's coming up for me? Realize if it's something in that situation or if there's something in your past that's bringing something up. If there's something in your past, ask yourself, okay, I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now. How old was I when I started feeling like this? Maybe that 16-year-old girl version of yourself is the thing that's feeling uncomfortable right now. And you're like, okay, that's just my 16-year-old self feeling like this inside of me. Hey, Kayla, at 16, you're totally cool. Everything's fine. You're safe. Everything's great. So ask yourself a question. What's coming up for you? 
is either something in the past or something currently. Hey, he's touching my arm. I don't like that. Okay, step three. How do we communicate that? Number one, am I smiling too much? Is my body language showing that I'm interested? Yes? Okay, switch that. Let's shut the smile down. Let's be a little bit more direct. No? I'm not giving off that body language or those vibes? Okay, that's interesting. Um, let's communicate it. So if I am showing that open body language, I'm smiling, oh, okay, to shut that shit down real fast. Super direct. Men can tell that your body language shifted, I promise you. I'm like, oh, what just happened to her? They're going to stop. Okay? Or if you weren't showing open body language and smiling, then you get to communicate what's coming up for you in a non-emotional way. Oh my God, don't touch my arm. I don't like that. Oh, you're making me feel uncomfortable. Oh, blah, blah. No, like do not do that. It's going to freak them out. They don't know what they don't know. It's going to freak them out a little bit. So in a really graceful way, right? Hey, hey, Bob. Hey, I really appreciate this conversation. Right now, my experience of you when you're touching my arm is making me feel a little weird. Can we go ahead and not do that? Move forward. And I'm just trying to tell you this. It's really uncomfortable for me to tell you this. I'm just, I'm trying to say like what's coming up for me. It has nothing to do with you. It's just, it's just something to do with me personally. That could be one way. I'm trying to think of other ways to say this. Because what I don't want to do is trigger them and freak them out. Maybe like physically taking a step back. Body language like, whoa, step back. <laughs> they touch your arm. Oh, thanks. Step back. They do it again. Hey, hey, Bob, I would really appreciate it if you didn't touch my arm. Uh, and I don't mean to offend you. Um, it's just something with me personally. Thanks. Your ego does not get to exist in this. Your ego wants to look good and wants to be right. It really wants to avoid pain and it wants to avoid fear. Your ego cannot exist. Whenever you're telling somebody some type of feedback, because it's not about you feeling like you're right. It's about communicating how you're feeling in a way that's going to be serving both of you. So, you know, using words like my experience or that what's coming up for me, it's not your fault. Like, this is something inside of me. Like, you just get to communicate that. You know, I feel like um, this is a really hard conversation for me to have with you, too, um, because in my life, I've been put in situations where, like, I could have got out of it. And I've been put in situations that, like, were out of my control and um, were really kind of scary. And I think that our ability to communicate how we feel um, it's really, really important. I remember going on a date with this guy and let's name him Bobby or Robbie. I don't know. Bob too. So I'm going on a date with Bob too. And um, he takes me to all these like places. We like bar hop. Really love that. Like going to different restaurants, trying different things. Really, really great. And we get all the way back to his place. Right. And I'm in Miami. It's a nice place in Miami. And I'm not going upstairs with him. Like, I'm making that super, super clear. Like, I'm not sleeping with you, dude. I'm not going upstairs with you. And I remember him telling me, like, hey, I have a really cool podcast upstairs. But, like, we'd really love if you come upstairs and see it. I'm like, okay, but I'm, I'm just letting you know that I'm not staying. And I just want to make sure that I'm communicating this right now. And the reason why I'm telling you this story, ladies, is because I feel like your ability to communicate in sales is going to change your dating life forever. It's going to change your dating life. It's going to change your relationship with your husband. It's going to change your relationship with your boyfriend. If you're single, change your relationship on dates. Your ability to communicate with what you want uh, is like super powerful in sales. And so he's like, yeah, no worries. Takes me upstairs. First of all, I walk into this place and it's like so smelly and disgusting. It looks like a child lives there. He has literally a picnic blanket for his bed spread. Okay. A picnic style. It looked like a picnic blanket like for lunch like the checkers to the red. Yeah. And um, <laughs> he shows me the podcast equipment. It has some really cool stuff, like all these buttons, kind of like these, you know, all right? Cool buttons that you can touch and everything. And uh, he tries to start like kissing me, mm, dude. But he grabs my back of my hair to like kiss me like really intensely. Like it freaking hurt. I didn't like it. No, <laughs> no, no, no. And um, oh my God, it made me feel so uncomfortable. And I literally pushed away from him and I was like, I didn't know what to say because I've been through a lot of, um, you know, physical abuse in my life and it triggered the crap out of me. Like, literally, I felt like I was about to start having a panic attack. I couldn't breathe. My voice was shallow. But I had something really special, which was the ability to communicate how I felt. 
I was like, hey, um, like you're triggering the crap out of me right now. Um, you're making me feel really uncomfortable. I want to go. I- I'm I'm leaving. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. I'm leaving. <laughs> um, I was like, probably has nothing to do with you, right? Trying to like, ro- like disarm him, <laughs> trying to make this situation go down so I can feel safe so I can get out of there. Well, it's nothing to do with you. It's probably my past stuff, but um, I, I need to leave. I don't feel safe right now. Um, I'm going to go. I appreciate tonight. Thank you so much for this this time together. I'm going to leave. This is how crazy these guys are. So I leave. He starts blowing up my phone, blowing up my phone, and then he sends me a, a Venmo request, ladies. Oh, my God. Sent me a Venmo request of um my portion of the evening. <laughs> uh- was telling me that I need to pay for my part of the evening because uh, I didn't want to, like, you know, sleep with him that night. Oh, my God. You guys are crazy. Whew. Man, this was years ago, but, oh, my God. I can't believe it. Uh, it was, like, right when I first got to Miami. And it uh, blew my mind, man. Like, how insane, you know, people can be. But uh, my point of telling you this is that, like, if I didn't have the ability to communicate how I felt, like, I don't know if I would have been able to leave so easily. You as a woman get to learn um, how to communicate in a way that's going to make you feel really good. That's going to make you honor your boundaries. That's make you honor your worth and who you are. When somebody's hitting on you in a sales conversation, look at me, hear me. You do not need that sale. You don't need it be detached from the outcome. You're here to help them find a problem and you're here to help solve it. And that's it. You don't need to smile extra hard at them. You don't need to bat those eyelashes. You don't need to let some weird guy touch your knee in order for you to close a deal. Like that is not what you have to do. I understand that some times are hard. I understand that you might have kids that you need to take care of. I understand that sometimes like it feels like you might be trapped and in a situation that you can't get out of and it'd be easier to just smile and get along with it. If you can communicate in a way that's not emotional in a way that has really good tonality if this is how we're going to do business like i i don't want to do business with you Uh, are we going to be able to remain professional or if it is it going to be like this i'm just curious these are good we should write these down these are awesome i'm just curious if this is how you behave with all your prospects is this how you behave with all your business relationships or is this different i'm confused shut it down it would be more risky for them not to do business with you. And the only way that they know that is if you know how to ask the right questions in a sales conversation. Um, so keep tuning in so that you can learn how to use the right questions. Uh, I hope that this episode was at least interesting and entertaining. <laughs> I want to know your situations. I want to know what you've been through. Like, let me help you. If you have something coming up, like, hey, this guy did this and this, like, Let me help you navigate through that. And you're only going to be able to do so with really great communication skills. But I got you. I promise you I got you. Look, make sure you go ahead and you like this episode of Closing Deals and Heels. You subscribe. Share this with a girlfriend that needs to hear it. Let's spill some more tea together. My mission is to create a world of worthy women that know how powerful and badass that they are. You don't have to do anything to be enough. You're more than enough with who you are right now. You're so worthy of the life that you want and you deserve. You deserve to make money on your own terms, not having to compromise who you are in order to be able to do it. And, um, you know, make sure that you uh, tune into this channel, subscribe, click that little notification at the top, and I will see you, darling, on the next episode of Closing Deals and Heels. Bye.